how did you go from that awareness of, whoa, this is not the path I can stay on it. Talk about unsafe. This is going to end very, very badly. How did you get from amygdala driven, having these huge emotions of anger that you'd been masking for so long to a place where you were at least open to trying on new thoughts and new behaviors. Yeah, well, I'm not a quick study. Let's just put it that way. When I was five years old, my uh, little old town in uh, Millerton, New Brunswick, I was walking across the road with my brothers and sisters and, uh, and I took a step and I looked to the left and back in the day, you know, if you're in around my age group, you remember that cars had door handles that stuck out. The door handle stuck out about two or three inches. Well, I took a step, I looked to the left, and I caught the door handle of a moving car in the right temporal lobe. Now, that was when I was about five years old. So, again, that's, you know, that's over 50 years ago. And back then, they had no idea, right? They just said, well, he's, he's not cross-eyed, he can walk, he, you know, he has speech. When I woke up, I had a bunch of metal uh, plates kind of lined up along the side of my head. It wasn't until about 15 years ago where I went and had a few, what they call them, a qualitative electrocephalogram. So I had basically had my head examined, which people have been telling me to do for years, apparently. And so what was interesting, and this really played a, played a part in my journey along the way, even though I didn't, I didn't really understand what was going on, is that the right side of my brain, this is where a lot of emotional regulation occurs from. And when my brain reaches a certain calibration, when I get under a certain degree of stress, that right side of my brain kicks out. I, I kind of flatten out, like taking uh, sometimes antidepressants will flatten people out emotionally. Well, it's almost like a breaker goes off in my brain on the right side when I get into a certain amount of stress. And the reason why I was having had, having my head examined was the um, going through a divorce. I, I was uh, my practice is fourteen years old. I'm just life's crazy. I'm going twenty four seven. I'm burned out beyond all belief. I would not recognize people in the, in the parking lot. They come talk to me, and I have no idea who they were. So the inability for facial recognition, I realize, but I've been studying neuroscience for a while. And I think it was just intuitive. I knew that I was going to need my own help to figure this out. So that was a part of the issue that I had drugs and alcohol and running and the inability to emotionally calibrate effectively. That was one of the drivers behind us. There was no emotional regulation um, being shown to me, being demonstrated by anybody in the family. Uh, my, own, my own brain had problems with it. It's still something I contend with. Like I had lots of strategies I worked with. And that really drove, drove a lot of the drug use. I needed something externally to provoke my brain into emotion, sort of emotional state. That's something I couldn't do on my own easily. Not only did I, I didn't have the, I didn't have the, um, the examples uh, given to me by the adults in my life. My, brain, my own brain struggled with emotional stability and emotional range, right? especially under stress. So drugs seemed to kick bridge that gap for me historically. Interesting. 